Yes. All right. I am hoping that by now everybody can see my screen. Y'all are seeing my screen? Yes, the screen is up. And Perfect. Able to see. Perfect. So thank you everyone for attending today's session. As Shani said, today is about dental and vision and what are your benefits. Um, feel free to ask questions. I want to make this interactive as possible. I'm seeing that it's a fairly small group, so let's have a conversation, right? So who am I or your broker? So Gallagher Insurance Brokers is actually an insurance broker who specializes in employee benefits, property and casualty, risk management, all of these things. And I am Tonya Ramchand Samaru. I am the senior account executive and I am responsible for service. And when we speak service, we speak about these awareness sessions and getting the best benefits out of your plan and what you're paying for. This is like a snapshot of Gallagher. We have been founded in 1927. We go by 25 tenants of basically what we go by is our 25 mottos. And honestly, for the past 13 years, we have been named as the world's most ethical company in the world. Um, additionally, what I will let you know is we are the fourth largest broker in the world. And we are the first large, we are the first in the Caribbean. How are we different? So I could speak about these 12 things and go all about it, but our presence, our people, we way how we negotiate, the way how we do our strategic partnerships, our strategies, our vision, everything about us is different when it comes to looking at other brokers. The way how we handle data analytics, the way how we actually get into your plan and hearing what the clients might want or need, that's how we are different and we can officially get into it. So what is our agenda today? So we are going to focus on your vision benefits, your dental benefits, waiting periods, which if it has any for vision or dental, maximum benefits, how to complete a claim form for both dental and vision, and what are the turnaround times? Again, feel free to ask any questions. So your vision benefits. So your vision benefit is $2,500 and you have a deductible of $150. In a network, if you go by any of the network providers, that is 80% in network. And if you go out of the network, it's 70%. If you should have contact lenses, it's 80% up to $1,250. And then if it says you have a waiting period, let's say your effective date is the 1st of January, you have to wait three months. So 1st of January, 1st of February, 1st of March, you would then be able to claim in April for your vision benefit. This is to note exams and lenses are payable once every 12 months and frames are payable once every 24 months. So when we say these things by months, we mean consecutive months and not calendar year. Do I have any questions? Someone is saying that they are only seeing the cover slides, not seeing the slides changing. Okay, let me see what I can do. I'm going to stop sharing and share again. Okay. All right. So, any Shanice, are you seeing us? Yes, the slide I'm currently seeing is vision benefit. All right. So do you want me, does that person want me to go back? Suzanne, I think I'm I'm pronouncing your name, right? Mm -hmm. Um, could you tell me if you want me to go back to these slides or you're you'll be good? Yes, okay. 
So I am your broker, Galaga. It's all here. I'm trans Samaru. And this is basically what we specialize in. So we specialize in employee benefits, property, casualty, and risk management, basically. Yes. So if you're six, if, Helen, are you on the plan? So I'm all right. Helen, so okay, so if you're you're not on a plan, you will not be able to join if you're over 60. But if you're under 60, yes, you would be able to join. Teo, yes, you can claim for glasses purchased online. What you need to do is fill out the claim form. You have to fill out the claim form because it's an online purchase. Submit your shipping fees along with your itemization of your expenses, and we will be able to have that claim paid through Guardian Life. So, Suzanne, okay, so I'm moving on now because I changed the slide, right? So, what is considered eligible expenses for vision? We have a vision exam. We have the materials such as your lenses, whether it's single, bifocal, trifocal, lenticular, or contact lenses. And then we have the frames. So, those are what is eligible for your vision benefit, those three specific items. If it says you have, so you're going to see NB in blue, claims can be made for either frames or conventional lenses or contact lenses. What does this mean? You cannot claim for frames, lenses, and contact lenses. You can only claim for frames and lenses or contact lenses only. And the only way that these services will be paid for is if it's done by a legal qualified ophthalmologist or optometrist. Do you have any questions about this vision benefit? No? All right. So contact lenses, we saw in the schedule of benefits that it says medical necessary. So what do we mean by medically necessary? Medically necessary means that not that when if I take off my glasses is contact, I need contact lenses. That is not medically necessary. Medically necessary would mean that I need to wear my contact lenses and my glasses at the same time. So usually you'll find that in people who have like cataract surgery, they actually need contact lenses and a set of frames to wear at the same time. So that is the only way it will be determined as a medical need and therefore your contact lenses and your frames and lenses would then be able to be paid the way that we speak like so so for example i wear contact i wear glasses and if i take off my glasses i need to wear contact lenses that means i have a choice which means it will be it will fall under cosmetic once i have a choice in how it is i wear my contact lenses that is when we determine if it's medically necessary or cosmetic and if it's medically necessary, it will be payable under the vision benefit. But if it's not, you will have to choose frames and lenses or contact lenses. So, of course, there's limitations to the plan. So, going through, I know it's a lot of words, so I will summarize it for you. The insurer will not pay for the for your lenses if it's free. So let's just say the government, a public institution, gives you a free pair of glasses. You cannot claim for that. If it is your terminated or if it's before your effective date, you would not be able to claim for it. If you if you have glasses and you wanted to buy another one because you just want to have two, three pairs of lenses or contact lens, um, not contact, sorry, frames, only one is payable. If it is you lose your glasses, you damage it, it was stolen, or any other vision appliances, that is also not paid by the insurer. You have to, it's on your initial um purchase and then you have your limitations in terms of 24 months for frames and 12 months for lenses if sunglasses is also not payable and if it's needed for example for work safety glasses and stuff that is also not claimable through your health plan 
lastly let's just say we go to our optometrist and we miss our appointments and let's just say because we missed the appointment the optometrist said well you missed your appointment last week and that is a 50 dollar charge for missing your appointment that 50 dollars is not reimbursable so you'll see that being on point six eight charges levied by a physician or optometrist for his time spent traveling so if a, if a doctor has to go from tobago to trinidad to come see you that is and you and he asks you to pay for your ticket that is not claimable broken appointments which is what we spoke about just now his transportation costs or if it is he charges you for the room that is not payable under your vision benefit. any questions All right, moving along. So how to complete a vision claim form? So we need the name of patient, which is by the patient's name. We need the date of service, because we spoke about effective dates, and we spoke about if it's if you claim for your lenses in 24 months or 12 months. We need a specific diagnosis. And what is considered a specific diagnosis under a vision benefit? We have astigmatism. We have myopia anything that needs a, a testing for your vision must have a diagnosis itemization of expenses so how much was your frames how much was your lenses and how much was your vision exam and we need receipts if this is we do not have receipts the insurer cannot pay the claim if it is you're using your e-card this is not applicable you will not have to complete a claim form However, if it is you're submitting it a traditional way, meaning you're submitting a paper claim, these are required. There are some vision places that give you an invoice instead of a receipt. Please ensure that you see a receipt and not an invoice. What is the difference between an invoice and a receipt? An invoice means that there is something to be paid and a receipt means that it was already paid. Moving on to dental, but before I move on, do we have any questions at all on this vision benefits? Yes, Tony, we have one, um, one, um, hand up. Yes, let me just unmute. Yes, Nicole. One minute after and meet her. Yes, good afternoon, Mrs. Samaru, and to everyone else. Um, you spoke about receipts and invoices, right? Let's right. suppose um you went to your eye specialist and um and um they recommended an eye drop, right? Mm -hmm. For you for your eyes or so, or you did you didn't um, they didn't have it, or for some reason you bought it elsewhere, right? Could you claim for that too? Okay, so that, if it's an eye specialist, that is under your medical benefits, mm -hmm. because that would be a different diagnosis. That means something medically wrong is with your eyes, or mm -hmm. you just need to medically check up on your eyes. Uh -huh. Depending on the type of eye drops, yes, it is claimable. What I suggest okay. you do is use your mm -hmm. e-card yeah. uh -huh. and, and, and have the provider scan it. Once that okay. provider scans that, you would be, as in, let's just say we go super farm, if, you, if they scan that, they will be able to tell you if it's covered or not. The, it okay. honestly depends on the type of eye drops because sometimes doctors, you may go because you notice your eyes are itchy and it's dry mm -hmm. and you may think you are having conjunctivitis when it might just be mm -hmm. dry eyes that is yeah. where we would focus on if it's dry eyes you may just need an over-the-counter eye drops and if it's mm -hmm. as you have conjunctivitis you would need something in the actual third schedule dispensary mm -hmm. so the best thing to do is get your e-card and go to the pharmacy and ask them to find out if it's covered under the health plan. But yes, usually eye drops are covered under your health plan. Okay, thank you. And I said eye specialists are meaning by the optometrist too, because sometimes they recommend um, eye drops as well. Well, you so mm. that's the thing. So let's go back to that. 
so Thank here you. on i'm going back to the ophthalmologist and optometrist so the difference between an ophthalmologist and an optometrist an optometrist can only give basically test your eyes an ophthalmologist would be able to prescribe medication so if the ophthalmologist prescribes the medication and he gives you a medical diagnosis then the eye drops more than likely would be covered because he will be giving you something that is able to treat your eye our optometrist will just suggest an eye drop, mm -hmm. which will be an over the counter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Most welcome. Any more questions? No? All right. So we're moving on to the dental benefits. So your dental benefits is $3,000 per calendar year. And you have a deductible of $150. If it says you're going by orthodontist, for this is only payable for children under the age of 19. It is not for the injured or their spouse. It's only for the dependent children under 19. And that is payable 75% up to 3000 However, if it's cleaning, extractions, filling, any kind of restorative um things that the dentist would have to do should you go by a dentist in the network that is 80 percent and if you go to a dentist outside of the network it will be 70 percent and of course just like vision there is a wasting period and that wasting period is also three months so for example again we're going to use the same example if you're effective this is the first of february you have the whole month of February, the whole month of March, the whole month of April to wait. And only after that, May 1st, you will then be able to claim for your dental benefits. Just something to note, cleaning must be limited to twice every year. So cleaning, those kind of things, is twice a year. So let's get more insight on how things are broken down in the insurance world and also in the dental world so that we'll have a clearer understanding of it. Preventative treatment is considered like oral exams, dental x-rays, that's the bite wing side mouth, and then the application of fluoride, that is considered preventative treatment. Any kind of major restorative would be endodontic, it would be um, initial provision of crowns, gold inlays or outlays then we have the replacement of crowns relining or adjustment for dentures repair of dentures additional of teeth to existing dentures replacement of full dentures partial dentures or existing and then we have the orthodontic for your dependent children which is orthodontic care recommended as necessary by the orthodontist any questions You can go ahead, Nicole, uh, Nicola, sorry, and ask a question. So, Nicole, you can ask your question. Rashad, you can ask your question as well. Um, we don't have any other questions. Sorry. Okay, your hand was up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no okay. problem. Rashad, then. Oh, okay. Um, are you all here me? Yeah. Yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, what I want to find out is that I know in some cases from before that um, you would have to have like a referral or such, but just in regards to them. Um, by the orthodontist, or um, do I need a um, referral from like a dentist to go to the orthodontist in order to receive the claim, or you know, or can I just go to the orthodontist, or do I need to be referred from a dentist before I go to the dentist? No, yes. but if it is for you, orthodontist or orthodontic treatment mm -hmm. is only for dependent children. It is not for the insured and their spouse. It's only for their children. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, like, for example, if you need braces, your children need braces, 
yeah. that is covered for your dependential run under the age of 19. Right, but for myself, it would be just then because she does not find out her root canal. Yes, correct. All right, okay, all right. Thanks, thanks for clearing that up. No problem. Nicola? Hi, are you hearing me? Yeah. Yeah, um, by chance, if you want to do like implants, like the, the implants or like what to put in dentures, will that be covered as well? Yeah, so relining or any adjustments for dentures within 12 months, it is covered. Replacements of full dentures, all of the denture work is covered. Oh, okay, so um, like if you're doing it private, you'll have to like pay, like pay full center. Once you provide pay. it, what you could do is check on Guardian's um, portal. They have, if you go onto your MyGG online, you'll be able to access their provider network. And on their provider network, you will actually, you will actually see the um, dance, dances that is on their network. So you don't have to pay out of pocket. You can just pay the difference. Okay. Any more questions, anyone? moving along so how do you complete your dentist claim form when you finish by the dentist and this is not using your e-card right so just like uh, the vision we need requirements so we need the name of patient so y'all are seeing where the fields are like basically like a fillable based on who you're going by you need to complete it so we need the name of patient we need the dates of service we need all applicable fields so let's go to applicable fields we need a patient name. We need your dates of fit. We need a dentist. That is our applicable field because they need to check to see if the dentist is registered with the dental board of Trinidad and Tobago. Stamp by the dentist. Signature of the dentist. The dates of the dentist. If it says he's doing cleanings and so forth, he needs to complete this section. And if it says he's extracting, please ensure we they put your tooth number or the surface numbers. We also need itemization of expenses. So that will be on your receipts. And we need your receipts. So some dancers as well, they will provide an invoice. And you would need you will not be able to get paid for it unless the receipt is, is given. Again, an invoice is saying something to be paid, and a receipt is saying something that was paid. If you have an invoice and you are unable to get a receipt, you can ask the dentist to provide you with a paid stamp on your invoice. Any questions before I move on to the limitations? No? All right. So limitations of the plan. We spoke about the vision. So let's talk about the, the dental. So... Let's say we go to Mount Hope Dental Hospital and we get some services done. Is that claimable for? The answer is no. So again, anything free from the government, it is not payable under your health plan because it has no, no fees to be charged because it's free. If it is it's a, a dental procedure that was done before or after your termination date, that is also not covered. Any kind of replacements or stolen dentures, if that is not covered. Um, then we'll talk about charges levied by a physician or a dentist for his time spent traveling, broken appointment. That is also not covered. So again, if a dentist, if you go by a dentist, you miss your appointment, he tell you you have to pay $50 and then he put down that $50 on the claim form, that is not payable. Any questions? All right. So I just want to remind you all how claims should be submitted. Claims should be submitted within 90 days of your date of service, the days you visited your um, optometrist, the days you visited your dancers. Claims are usually paid by ACH. However, if it says you do not have an AC, your banking information registered with Gallagher nor Guardian Life, it will be paid via check. And uh, I suggest you get your banking information sent to us because checks usually take very long right now in order to get that actual physical check. And for the members who would like to join the plan, 
from 18 to 40, you need the enrollment form, and 41 to 60, it's an enrollment form and declaration of insurability. Your premiums member only is two eighty three ninety five. Member plus one, meaning you and a spouse or you and one child, it will be four ninety three ninety five. And member and family, it's seven hundred and seventy two dollars and ninety five cents. Any questions, peeps? Friends, y'all are like my friends now. Yes, Nicola. Hi, what's he mean? Like he made a mom multicus claim for a dollar. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Once this money you're spending and it's it's medically needed or vision or dental, yeah, you can claim it. So, like for example, um Periton is uh, I think it's like 20 cents or something. If you need if it's medically required and it's needed and it's prescribed by a doctor. Yes, it's it's you could go ahead and claim for it. Nicole. Yes, hello again. Could you could go back to the claim form, please? I want to ask a question concerning that. Dental or vision? Then the dental. Sure. Yes, that's one here. No, we have 90 days before we claim it. I mean 90 days to claim, right? Correct. But as, but I was looking at um on the form there, treatment period, number of months. Say, like, the treatment is taking more than three months. What can it's, somebody do? All right. So the treatment period is needed so that the insurer will know how much to cater for you or what is mm -hmm. expected. However, mm -hmm. you have 90 days to submit your claim. So, yes, the treatment period will be, let's say, six months. Mm -hmm. Once you know your three months is expiring, you need to submit this claim form and then you can submit other claim forms okay, when that treatment period is like is coming up. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay, so Helen asks, how old should the family member be? Helen, okay, so for in terms of having coverage, your family member can be your, your dependents can only be your spouse and your children. Children can fall into stepchildren, adopted children, and your birth children. If it is your family member, is they could be anywhere between, if it's an insured, it would be from 18 and over. If it is you want them as a dependent, your dependents can be from the day they're born to age 99. They just may have to be under it, depending on their age. Susan asks, what are the max benefits and deductible figure for vision? So the max benefit for vision, we're going back to the vision benefit, it's $2,500 and the deductible will be $150. Do I have any more questions? Yes, Nicola. Hi. Um, for the um, for the for the dentist, right? I think um, if I was an I think the implants just cost like according to where you're going. If you're going private, I think it's cost like around five, it's five thousand dollars. But the one in my area costs five thousand dollars per implant. Mm -hmm. Do they do the the do the um? dental thing it will be able to cover that or up to it will be up to the three thousand they'll be able to cover correct once the dentist is in the network it'll be 80 percent up to three thousand if it's out of network it's 70 percent out of up to three thousand okay um okay what was like appointments and stuff do they do they cover that like if you go like more than if you go more than one doc, like depending on your like services Depending on your services, it is payable. Okay. All right. Evelyn says, currently I'm paying for insured and family, but soon it'll be only my husband and I. Do you guys readjust or do I have to go to the branch to make the changes? You would have to go to the branch to make your changes. So in the event that you're moving from employee and family to employee and one, yes, because they will need to now take off the difference in your premium. 
Helen, Shanice will answer that question in terms of the recording. My pleasure, yeah. Evelyn. Um, at the end of the session, probably by tomorrow or so, we will just go over all the participants and I'll confirm once we can share it, we will share it because we will have your email addresses. All right, do I have any more questions? All right, so if I don't have any more questions, I really want to thank you all so very much for attending today's session. I want you all to look out for more from us. I hope you enjoyed today's session and it was informative for you guys. Um, however, feel free to reach out to us or your PSU team. And I'm handing you over now to Shanice. Thanks again, everyone. All right. Thank you so much, Tonya, for a very insightful session, as always. Um, if anyone has any final questions before we wrap up, um, yes, I'm seeing more persons asking for the recording. Yes, by tomorrow, we'll just go through the list and we will send off the recording to you all, right? So you all can have the information. All right, so if there's no further questions, then thank you everyone for attending our session. Do look forward for more of these sessions in the future. Thank you very much, Tonya, and do have a good night, everyone. My pleasure. Bye-bye, everyone. Safe trip home if you're not home. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>